In the realm of music, the number two is said to be the keystone that connects virtually every musical concept that exists today. Rhythm, harmony, and even musical forms all submit to the mathematical dominance of the number two due to its role in simplicity and symmetry. In this video, I will introduce another number that also asserts musical dominance. Can you guess what the number is? I'll give you three hints. It is the maximum number of symbols in the key signature. It is the minimum number of strides to send a note back to itself. It is the minimum number of configurations for brass instruments to cover the chromatic scale. A key defines a default set of notes to be used in a musical passage. This set of notes is formed from a major scale, which is a series of notes sequentially arranged in order of pitch, distributed based on a defined intervallic scheme, namely TTH, TTTH, which sums up to an octave. Let me walk us through what I meant step by step. A major scale is formed by writing a starting note, followed by the next note, which is a tone T, or two semitones higher. The third note is formed by adding a tone to the second note. And the fourth note is formed by adding a semitone to the third. Following through with the intervallic scheme, we come back to the same starting note, but at an octave higher. The result is the major scale. A restriction to be observed is that no two notes shall share the same alphabet within the octave. In addition, the sequence of alphabets must not contain any skips, so we cannot jump directly from B to D flat without assigning C. Now, bearing the rules in mind, we see that when writing the E major scale, for example, we cannot spell the third degree G sharp as A flat, even though they refer to the same note on the piano or guitar, for example. Because both the third and fourth degrees share the same alphabet A. As a result of this, a selection of notes will be affected by flats or sharps, and these form the key signature corresponding to the key named after the first note of the major scale. If we construct a major scale on each of the 12 notes in an octave, we can uncover a pattern after we arrange the scales according to the number of sharps and flats their keys have. You see, every sharp added to the current key signature places the new key at a fifth, perfect fifth above the current key. On the other hand, every flat added to the current key signature places the new key at a perfect fourth above the current key. Continuing this pattern, we see that the maximum number of flats or sharps we can fit in the key signature is 7 before the pattern overrides itself. For instance, G flat major has six flats: B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, and C flat. Adding a perfect fourth gives C flat major, which has seven flats. Adding another perfect fourth gives F flat major, which has a B double flat instead of a B flat. Remember, we can't just spell B double flat as A as the letter A has already been used in the third degree, A flat. Adding another perfect fourth gives B double flat major which now has both B double flat and E double flat, and so on. We see that the resulting new symbols in the key signature begin to override the symbols it started with, thereby resulting in an infinite spiral. So mathematically, the furthest possible we can go in terms of the number of symbols that can appear in a key signature is 7. Well, actually, there is another far more intuitive and straightforward way to see why it has to be 7. Well, as we have already established, there are 7 unique notes in a major scale. The maximum number of notes we can alter is then 7. So that's it. Let's play a game. Pick a note. A, C, D, whatever. Now form a major scale on that note and extend the scale across multiple octaves. 
Pick any whole number greater than 0 and less than 7. Add that to the note you picked to find out where you end up with along the extended major scale. Add the same number again on the new note to see where you'll end up with along the scale. Keep on doing this until you end up with the note you started with. How many times did it take? Well, let me guess, it's 7. Now, how did I get to that conclusion? From what we've seen so far, a major scale consists of 7 intervals per octave. Extending this scale to n octaves long gives a total of 7 n intervals. Our goal here is to find out how many strides it takes to reach the 7 nth interval, which represents the starting note n octaves away. Equivalently, we can imagine a flight of stairs consisting of 7 n steps. If we walk up the stairs at delta steps per stride, how many strides does it take to reach the top? The solution to this is mathematically represented as s equals 7n over delta. Let's investigate the case where delta is 1, which is the case where we walk up the stairs one step at a time. We get s equals 7n. Since n is a whole number representing the number of octaves, 7n is therefore whole. Taking the smallest value for n as 1, we see that it takes a minimum of 7 steps to reach the starting note. Now let's investigate the case where delta is 2. We get s equals 7n over 2. This expression only returns a whole number when n is a minimum of 2. When that happens, the number of strides becomes 7. n equals 2 here means that it takes only 2 octaves for the stride to reach the starting note. In fact, any stride size takes the same number of octaves to reach the starting note. And these two values cancel out, leaving 7 as the prevailing number for all cases, except when the stride size is 0 or 7. We don't get the same consequence for the chromatic scale, which has 12 intervals. Using the same thought process, the expression for the number of strides would be this. Trivially, it takes a minimum of 12 steps to reach the starting note if the stride size is just 1. For a stride size of 2, s equals 6n, with n taking the minimum value of 1, it takes only 6 strides to reach the starting note. For a stride size of 3, it takes only 4. Why is it so different for the case of the chromatic scale then? Well, that's because 12 is not prime. It is divisible by 2, 3, 4, and 6. So a stride size of any of the 4 factors of 12 will result in an s less than 12. The mathematical property we have discussed for the case of scales is profound. Extending this to harmonies in place of single notes, we obtain harmonic sequences which play a huge role in chord progressions for classical and modern music alike. And that will be for another video. How many configurations a brass instrument must have in order to produce all notes within the chromatic scale? By configurations, I mean the combinations of fingerings for valved brasses or the number of positions along a slide for the trombone. To answer this question, we need to understand the acoustics of brass instruments. For that, we need to introduce the harmonic series. First, without any loss of generality, let's bring forth the tuba, my wife during my high school years, and understand the way she works. Let's look past her curves and focus only on the tubes, because that's where the magic happens. Without pressing any keys, this is the infinite series of notes that I can access. By adjusting my airflow and embouchure, I can play the notes I want from this series. This is the natural harmonic series of my tuba. Natural, meaning nothing has been altered by depressing any keys or engaging any valves. 
Generally, the first note in the series, which is called the fundamental tone or pedal tone, is not frequently accessed by brass players due to its lack of stability. Rather, the second harmonic is the most stable, full, and robust tone in the series. So, for all purposes of discussion, we will disregard the pedal tone. Our goal is to make the tuba more inclusive, allowing us to play at least a full octave of a chromatic scale. Since our tuba is still in its natural mode, meaning we are only able to play notes strictly from this series only, it is therefore impossible for us to access this A, this C, this F sharp, or E flat. So, the logic is that if we are able to somehow move the entire harmonic series by changing the effective length of the vibrating air column inside the tuba, we can then access notes that are otherwise inaccessible naturally. Now, let's ignore every note higher than the third harmonic so that we target the largest gap in the series. Next, imagine a fingering that could lower the natural harmonic series by a semitone. So B flat and F become A and E. We can therefore now access four notes: A, B flat, E, and F. Let's keep going. Imagine another fingering that could lower the new series by yet another semitone. So A and E become A flat and E flat. Now we can access six notes: A flat, A, B flat, E flat, E, and F. As we can see. If we want to eventually come to a full octave of a chromatic scale, we need to lower the harmonic series by a total of six semitones. Adding that to the natural harmonic series as one unique configuration, we get a total of seven ways to access at least a full octave of the chromatic scale, and this makes our tuba functional and inclusive. For trombones. The lowering of the natural harmonic series is done by directly changing the length of vibrating air column using the slide. In fact, we have only just looked at the second and third harmonics. Since higher order harmonics are increasingly closer to each other, filling up the gap of the lower order harmonics more than guarantees the gaps at the higher order harmonics are filled. As a result, brass instruments are able to cover multiple octaves of the chromatic scale just by accessing seven distinct harmonic series. By talking about the number seven, we get a glimpse of how key signatures work, how the cyclic property of scales defines harmonic progression, and the role of harmonic series in sound generation. Each of which deserving its own videos. The purpose of tying mathematics with music in this video is not to scare away music learners, but it is to enunciate the fact that music isn't always entirely arbitrary with its rules. I hope that this video sheds light on music in ways that are different from a perspective or experience, because music truly is amazing if you perceive it from an unconventional viewpoint. And finally. Please enjoy making music.